What's up guys, I'm Rustin from RossmerTech.com and this is another tutorial in Swift programming. Now in this class, I'm going to show you guys how to use nested functions. So let's get started. Now what are nested functions? Well, nested functions are just functions inside a function. Now in my last class, I showed you guys how to create a function. So we're going to start off this tutorial by creating a function, then we're going to create another function inside that function. So to create a function, again, we type in the func, which is short for function. Then we hit space. Now we got to give our function a name. I'll call mine red. Then after the function name, we need this open and close parentheses. Then uh, we hit space. If we're going to give our uh, function a return value, or if our function is going to return something, we need to add it here. And then I'm going to return a integer value. So we need to add this hyphen or minus symbol and uh, this greater than symbol. Then we got to tell it what data type our return value is going to be, and it's going to be an integer data type, so we're going to type in int. Now we're going to hit space, open and close curly brace. In between the open and close curly brace, we're going to hit enter a few times. This is the structure of our function here, right? We use the func keyword, which is short for function. We hit space. We give our function name. We call this function red. Open and close parentheses, right? Then we hit space. Then we told uh, this function that we're going to return a integer data type, a value of an integer data type. And uh, we, we added this open and close parentheses. Now in between the open and close parentheses is where we're going to uh, put all the statements that we want the function to do. All the, every statement that we want the function to do. Now, uh, we, our function is going to have a few input parameters. And we add the input parameters in between this open and close parentheses of the function name. Our first input parameter we're going to call A. You can name it whatever you want. We have to add colon, then the data type of our input parameter. It's going to be integer data type, so we're going to type in int. Now I'm going to add a second one. To add another one, all you need to do is add a comma. we got to name our parameter again. I'm going to name the second one b, colon, then the data type again. It's going to be another int. So I'm going to type in int. So from the top, we created the function using the func keyword, which is short for function. We had space. We uh, gave our function a name. We called it red. And we added this open and close parentheses. In between the open and close parentheses, we added two input uh, parameters. Our first one we called A, and it's an integer data type. And the second we called B, and it's an integer data type as well. And outside the closing parentheses of the function, we are returning an integer also. We're going to turn an integer value when, when the function is completed. Now, again, outside this, uh, here is this open and close curly brace. Now, in between the open and close curly braces, where all the statements are going to be when the function is called. So in here is where we're going to type in all our statements. Now in between this open and close curly brace, I'm going to type in another function. So this is the function in a function I was talking about. This is what a nested function is. Now we're going to use the func keyword again. We're going to hit space. I'm going to call my uh, function blue. And uh, again, we need to add this open and close parentheses, hit space, open and close curly brace. In between the open and close curly brace, we're going to hit enter a few times. Oop, too far. All right, so we created another function within this function right here, and our function is called blue. And I'm not going to add any input parameters. I just want this function to do something. Every time we call this function, it's just going to do something, and we want it to print something out on the screen. So, and I want it to print out. So we're going to use the print ln uh, keyword, open close parentheses, and I want it to print out the value of a, comma, and b, a and b together. So now, whenever this function blue is called, it's just going to print out the value a and b, our input uh, parameters of a and b. Right now, we don't have any value because we haven't called our function and gave it the, these two values yet. And we're going to do that later. Now, outside the closing curly brace of function blue, before the closing curly brace of function red here, you know, we're going to type in, uh, actually, we're going to call function blue. To call function blue, we type in the, the function name and then open a close uh, parentheses. If we had any input parameters or any values to return to the function, we would add it in between this open and close parentheses. So function blue, we, we didn't add any input parameters, so we're just calling it. This is how we call the function. Now underneath this function name here, we're going to re use a return statement or return keyword. We're going to type in R-E-T-U-R-N. The return is for function a. So it's going to return the value of a plus, oops, plus b. So 
basically uh, when we give it uh, value down here we haven't given any value because we haven't called the function a or we haven't called the function red yet when we give a function red these two uh, numbers here it's going to return the value of a plus b back to wherever you called it so right now let's call a function red to see what happens so to call function red you could do it a bunch of different ways but I want to print the value of function red onto the screen. So we're going to use this P R I N T L N keyword again, open and close curly brace in between the open and close curly brace. We're going to call the function to call a function. Again, you type in the function name, which is red again, open and close curly brace again in here. So now in between the open and close curly brace of the function name here, oops, this is the name. This is how we're invoking the function in between this open and close curly brace of the function name. We're going to give it, we're going to give it the integers that we're going to pass back to the function and it's waiting for two of them one for a and one for b so the first one we're going to give it a value of four i'm going to add a comma and to add the second one you just add a comma then i'm going to give it a value of six so whenever we call the function it's going to return this value back to the function so four is going to go to a and six is going to go to b that's the way it works the first one goes to the first one and the second one goes to the second one so now we call the function here with this uh, statement so now it's going to return the value of 4 into A and 6 into B again. So now we get up to here, right? It's going to jump straight to uh, here, to this line here. And uh, it's going to bypass this because we haven't called blue yet. It's going to jump straight into this here. And it's going to, this statement here is calling blue. So now it's going to jump to blue here. Then it's going to jump in between the open and close curly brace of the blue function and we have one statement in between the open and closed curly brace of the blue function and it's just to print the value of a and b together so it should print out uh, four comma six basically so now it's going to jump down to here right so it's already printed four comma six because we gave it the values here now it's going to jump to this return statement now we're going to return the value of a plus b back to here so again, we, we use this uh, hyphen and uh, this greater than symbol to uh, give it an integer data type because we knew we were going to return a value back to the user when they called the function, right? So we're going to return an integer back to the user. So this is what this is doing is returning that integer back to the user. And it's gonna, the integer is going to be the value of a plus b, which is uh, 4 plus 6, which should be 10, basically. So it returns it back to wherever you called it, right? And it should populate it in between here. So it should print out that value of 10. So let's hit play here and see what happens. Build succeeded. And as you can see here, first it printed out four comma six. It printed this out because, actually the first line of code that's executed is this here. It bypasses all the functions and it goes to wherever line of code is outside the functions. This is the first line of code here. This code here is a print line code and it's giving the two values back to our integer it's calling integer red first right we're calling it and we're giving it these two input parameters four and six it gets up to here then it bypasses blue because we haven't called blue yet right it goes to this line of code this is the first line of code that's in between uh, this open and close curly brace of function red. So it's this line of code is calling function blue. So we're jumping here, we're calling function blue and it's going to the first line of code that's in between this open and close curly brace of function blue. So the only line of code that we have is this print line and it's gonna print out the value of A and B together. That's why I printed this here. Now uh, that we did this one here, it's gonna jump to this return statement. And this return statement returns the value of a plus b back to the user. So the value of a is uh, 4 because we, we added it here. We gave it that value. And uh, the value of b is 6. We added it here when we called the function because we added, we needed to give it uh, two input parameters. We needed those values because we added the input parameters inside the function right here. So it was waiting for two integers or two numbers. So we gave it the two numbers. Then it's going to add those two numbers together and return the value of those two numbers, which you added, which should be 10. It returns it back here to the user. So it should print out 10. That's why you printed out 10 over here. All right, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rustin from RossmerTech.com and thanks for watching.